There are many different types of vulnerabilities and it is useful to be able to categorize them. Such a categorization can also help understanding the general underlying problem and to understand how to avoid mistakenly inserting such vulnerabilities from the beginning. Still, a categorization is very challenging to make since there will be interactions and overlaps between the categories. Here, in part 7, we will discuss how the CWE is used to categorize and enumerate weaknesses. CWE is short for Common Weaknesses Enumeration. As the name suggests, it is a way of enumerating different types of underlying weaknesses. Recall that a weakness is an error that might lead to a vulnerability, meaning it might or might not be exploitable. Weaknesses are in this context very general and also includes issues that could make it more difficult to fix a vulnerability, for example lots of duplicated code throughout the codebase. It also includes issues that increases the chances of introducing vulnerabilities, such as a large number of unconditional branches, which makes it difficult to understand and maintain the software. In total, the CWE list consists of about 1,000 distinct weaknesses, categorized in some different ways. The CWE list includes both software and hardware weaknesses that can have some security implication. Hardware weaknesses were added in 2020 due to a number of significant security issues related to hardware, such as Rowhammer, Meltdown and Spectre. The weaknesses are organized differently using views. We will use the software development view in our description. This view organizes weaknesses by development related concepts. There are also, for example, views for hardware security, for specific programming languages, for weakness introduced during the design phase, for weaknesses introduced during the implementation phase, and from mobile applications, and more. The view shows the relationship between weaknesses in a tree-like structure. And for the software development view, it is very simple. The weaknesses are arranged by a set of categories. There are quite a few different categories, but just looking at a few examples, the authentication errors category include around 20 weaknesses. One is improper certificate validation, meaning that it is possible to bypass verification of digital signatures, which can lead to faking the identity of websites. Another is the use of client-side authentication, that is when the client is authenticated using code residing on the client. This is a problem if client code can be manipulated, or if it is possible to craft successful authentication responses to the server. A third example is using an overly restrictive account lockout mechanism. It is good practice to make sure that a certain number of failed passwords will lock the account for some time. But if this time is too long, this could create the possibility for an attacker to lock out a legitimate user. All weaknesses also have their unique ID which can be used to refer to them. This is called the CWE identifier. As can be seen, these errors are generally described and hypothetical in the sense that it does not point to a specific software or system that has these errors. Such vulnerabilities would be instances of the corresponding weaknesses, so the CVE identifier for a vulnerability can be mapped to the CWE identifier of the underlying weakness. Looking at NVD, you would find hundreds or thousands of specific instances of weaknesses. Also, one vulnerability can be mapped to several different weaknesses. To take one more example, the category Data Neutralization Issues includes many weaknesses that are often found in applications. The well-known SQL injection is in this category. This is a way of injecting SQL database control logic into data such that the web application can be made to issue crafted SQL commands to the database. This is known to leak database information, for example, password data. Data neutralization is not just for input, but also for output data. Another weakness in this category is named improper output neutralization for logs, meaning that if an application does not sanitize data before it is written to a log, the log can get corrupted with fake entries. This is also an example of the difficulty of strictly categorizing weaknesses. The CWE-117 improper output neutralization for logs can also be found in the audit logging errors category. 
Since there is a connection between the vulnerabilities identified by a CVE and one or more weaknesses that are identified by a CWE, the vulnerability frequency and their severity can be used to rank different weaknesses. If there are many vulnerabilities of a certain weakness type, and these vulnerabilities tend to have a high CVSS score, such weaknesses could be considered of higher risk. Such a ranking is done in the CWE Top 25 list. This is a list that is updated each year, taking data from vulnerabilities in the last two years. This is the 2022 list, which uses CVE data from 2020 and 2021. Using this ranking, we can see that Out of Bounds Right is ranked as the highest severity weakness. Though the score does not reveal the details of the underlying data, we can conclude that Out of Bounds Right is common cause for vulnerabilities that also often receive a high CVSS severity rating. Over the years, this list changes slightly but some weaknesses can see a rather significant change in this risk rating from one year to the next. The two most significant changes upwards in the 2022 list are race conditions and the command injection weaknesses that shifted 11 and 8 positions up in the list respectively. That concludes our course on security vulnerabilities. We have discussed a large number of terms, technologies and concepts, some of which you had probably heard of already. And though we have just touched the surface, the topics included in the course gives you a solid foundation for understanding vulnerabilities and how they are found, categorized, measured and exploited. Understanding the terminology used when talking about vulnerabilities will help you quickly understand vulnerability information and assess the vulnerability in the context of your software or application. And as we have seen, immediate remediation, like applying a patch or updating the software, is sometimes crucial in order to avoid attacks. We hope you enjoyed the course and that your time was well spent.